Hey friends, Monday, I'm Brett, your people watching me through a computer screen or phone screen or TV, the internet's weird. You know what else is weird? Me continuing this intro. So let's move on into the hot news today, which is uh, some good stuff from AMD, okay? We've been talking a lot about Navi and Zen 2. We have plenty of that news coming on in just a little bit, but there's some interesting filings that we found from AMD about upcoming and next generation graphics cards, not related to anything out that's out on the market right now, but things that could potentially even help Intel and Nvidia's designs because AMD filed a patent for cooling 3D stacked memory so that they can pile crap on top of crap, but still be able to actually cool it properly on the chip itself and make sure that it's okay. This especially could help something like Intel's Foveros technology, which would allow them to efficiently stack things, not just like two layers, but multiple layers on top of that. It uses a pretty well-known cooling idea, which is basically Peltier cooling, which uses thermal electric coolers. So it's not like something super revolutionary, but the application is unique to what AMD has filed in the patents. So it could be something good coming on later down the pipeline. But then also on top of that, there's also another file for a patent, which is a new method for instruction scheduling of shader programs on a GPU. So they have a lot of different patents coming through that could potentially wind up in future technology of their GPUs in a little bit. And they're not just waiting for Intel to come and acquire more of their people and then them be stuck being like, what do we do? They're actually still moving forward. Although this could be before people left and they're just now getting the patents. Like Raja Kadori could have even submitted these and we don't know. We don't know. We, we could if I looked at the patents, I'll tell you that, because usually they have that information. Anyways, let's talk about, uh, also, there's some more filings going on, especially with the Eurasian Economics Commission, which shows that AMD is filing for the trademarks of the RX 5950 XT, RX 5950, 5900 XT, 5900, 5850 XT, 5850, 5800, 5800 XT, 5750, what is this, 5650, what, all the numbers going down to a 50 RX 590 XT. So they could potentially increase the RX 590 on the current Polaris architecture. Uh, great. We'll see how Navi scales in the future, whether or not the 5950 is actually something to write home about and can potentially compete with Nvidia's top end, or if the lower end can compete with things such as their current Polaris lineup as I almost dropped my wear root book on the floor. But you know what can't compete or can compete depending on how you look at it? Well, there's latest benchmarks coming out between the new Navi GPUs that are supposed to launch on July 7th and then the new super line of graphics cards, which are supposed to be formally announced by Nvidia tomorrow. It shows that the RX 5700 XT actually handedly beats the RTX 2070 in Time Spy, but then we also have leaked benchmarks of Final Fantasy 15, which show it getting trounced by the RTX 2070 Super as well as the RTX 2070. But obviously, Final Fantasy is a super NVIDIA heavy freaking benchmark. That thing, like, if you try to run it with a Vega, it's just like, screw you, I'm running at 7 FPS, you're trying to give me hair works, I don't know how to live my life anymore, I'm dead. That's, that's what our Vega cards say, okay? Because Final Fantasy just really sucks at it. So what we're looking at though, if we can extrapolate from other data, is that the RX 5700 XT will wind up being better than the RTX 2070, which is supposed to, supposedly obsolete and canceled as soon as the Super is announced. They're not dropping the price, they're just getting rid of it. And then it is worse than the RTX 2070 Super, but it's $50 less, so it still could be a good value proposition. We'll see how that goes, and depends on how much the RTX 2070 Super is better than the 5700 XT. But, would, I mean, we only have to wait a few more days. Speaking of waiting a few more days, this doesn't make any sense. Liquid nitrogen overclocking on a Ryzen 9 3950X, 16 cores, AM4 platform, great. It appears that somebody was able to hit 5.4 gigahertz on the 3950X, which is phenomenal, and managed to hit a score of 5,501 points on Cinebench. In case you don't know, at stock, the 2950X, which is the Threadripper chip, can hit 3,645 points. So, wow. Wow, 
I mean, not only are these things overclocking better than they were on liquid nitrogen, but they're performing crazily good. So it actually looks like a lot of what the Ryzen 3000 rumors are showing are gonna be pretty dang decent. But then there's also more information out there showing that the Ryzen 5 3600 is beating the i9-9900K in a Passmark single score, single threaded score, which is great. How many people actually can correlate a Passmark score to something in a real world scenario? Don't really know, but the 3600 is actually looking at being the best chip for you to buy if you're trying to pick up Ryzen 3000 because freaking $200 and it beats a $500 chip or comes really close in a lot of instances, like 9900K is dead. You're dead, you're dead to me. I hope you die. That's how I feel. But you know who's not dead? Silicon Lottery, bad transition again. They are a company known for binning CPUs and then selling them out to people. So they buy a whole bunch of, let's say 9,900Ks, check and see which ones can overclock the best at the lowest voltage, and then sell those at a price premium, guaranteeing certain voltages and frequencies at whatever you wanna run your motherboard at. Anyways, it looks like they have confirmed that they are indeed going to be doing this with the Ryzen 3000 processors. Even though they're not gonna be delitting and repasting them since Ryzen 3000 is soldered, they will be binning the chips and selling you the best ones at a price premium, which is kinda good. Now let's talk about price premiums, which is the RTX 2060 Super. We've got that spied on camera now. Big thanks to video cards for that one. And then as we move on from Nvidia stuff, let's talk about rhinos who don't wanna have sex. <laughs> Anyways, apparently there's a new uh, method for using test tube embryo transfer to make sure that the northern white rhino, which is near extinct at this point because the you know they just can't mate or don't want to mate anyways. Oh, they can't bear children, that's sad. So they're looking at a potentially new way of lab-made embryos being transferred into the rhino. And that way we can prevent another species from going extinct due to our over poaching. This is a lovely room of death. Then let's talk about SpaceX, who recently launched their satellites to implement the Starlink system, which is supposed to provide internet to the world, especially in rural areas. Obviously, latency is going to be a bear, but it's not something that is out of the realm of possibility for people who are out in the middle of wilderness get to get pretty decent internet. Anyways, they launched 60 satellites initially as a test, and it appears that they still have 57. You know, losing 5% is not bad. Obviously, they need to have thousands in the sky in order to provide internet to the entire world, but it's a good test thus far. SpaceX says that they have uh, no idea what happened to them. They're gonna plan on deorbiting two of the functioning satellites so that they can test what it's like for the other three that lost communication to die and crash in the atmosphere. So they know what's gonna happen and hopefully it just burns up. That's, that's what we want. No more space junk. Speaking of space junk, uh, the US is reneging on a few of the promises that they made to Huawei saying, you're not, you're, you're fired. fired. My Donald Trump, you're fought. Anyways, apparently President Trump has at least postponed some of the bans that are currently supposed to be implemented by the Department of Commerce, and they're gonna be loosening up some of the trade tariffs that were supposed to be happening with China. They're just gonna be delaying them for right now. Nothing is really known about what happened. Obviously, President Trump was just at the G20 meeting. He actually is the first sitting president to ever step foot in North Korea, so he's breaking ground, including um, you know, nearly shutting down a company and just being like, nah, fam next year. Wow. And then speaking of next year or in a couple years, the United Arab Emirates has unveiled their plan to debut the world's largest individual solar power project where they're going to produce nearly 1.2 gigawatts of electricity. It kind of helps if you're in the middle of a desert and it's almost double what the U.S.'s biggest facility is. So that's it's pretty amazing. Good job, UAE. Sustainable electronics, electricity, sustainable environment. And then an interesting Reddit thread that I saw on Reddit, the hardware sub subreddit. Um, my words are not working right now. Anyways, it appears that CryoRig might be having some issues with its US branch. Apparently, at least according to this one poster, that uh, he hasn't had a single response from CryoRig over his support request. Their storefront phone number is now out of service. The last time they tweeted was in January. The cryo store on Newegg hasn't been restocked in six months. The official store on Amazon is out of inventory, and it just looks like uh, they are not going anywhere, especially in the US. Apparently the worldwide 
the ASP branch of CryoRig is still working, but that would explain why so many people are just like, where did you get the CryoRig C7 copper version for your shroud or for your mini ITX build, Brett? Where did you get it? And I'm just like, I got it on Amazon. Oh, it's not in stock. I don't know how to help you. I'm sorry, it appears that we got one of the last ones because I ordered it in January. In case you're a fan of the Sandman comics by Neil Gaiman, it appears that Netflix has actually purchased the rights to them. So we might be seeing a Netflix Sandman ad adaptation, which could be good if we look at Castlevania or what else other ad adaptations. Voltron wasn't terrible. I didn't see that one. Yeah, Netflix hasn't done terrible in everything, or it could be like the Death Note movie. And then apparently Apple, Google, <laughs> this episode's not working for me. Apparently Google is working on an airdrop competitor called FastShare to replace Android Beam and then to allow Android users to finally share files easily. Like airdrop's amazing, what the frick, Google. Okay, I don't wanna have to download an app. It should just be built into my operating system. And then speaking of what the frick, Cooler Master is getting into the monitor game. Their stands look like the Cooler Master logo. They have FreeSync. Uh, they have a 2560 by 1080 ultra wide at 200 Hertz and a 1440p at 120 Hertz. One millisecond response time, pricing of 400 to $1,000. Cooler Master a monitor? What do you think of this? And then speaking of thinking, Elon Musk and Tesla. They are apparently trying to usurp Panasonic and make their own electric vehicle battery cells. Pretty cool. You know what else is cool? Ending hot news or Peltier coolers. They're hot on one side, warm on the other. Thermoelectric cooling is amazing. I'm done, I'm done, oh wow, this episode has been something else. Thank you everybody for watching and putting up with me. Let me know what you thought of anything I talked about down in the comments. Hit the like button, get subscribed. You know you wanna. I'm Brett, love you too.